I was planning on going uh, to visit my grandmother in California um, at the end of June for her 85th birthday. Um, right before the pandemic, she went to the hospital for her hip and she had to stay in the hospital for about two months and couldn't have any visitors. And so it was a really hard time for her. And before that, I had planned to go there for her birthday um, and kind of surprise her. And I had to cancel that trip, which was really hard. My worst experience, during the coronavirus would probably, it wasn't actually an experience. I would just say just the unknowing of how to take care of your family during that time, because you don't know if you're going back to work, you don't know if there are going to be more opportunities acting wise, you don't know how the entertainment world is going to be affected by it. So my whole thing was what can be done to solidify myself as an actor and an entertainer and a model just to ensure that my family is provided for. There's just a lot of times where I wasn't able to see family and wasn't able to do certain things that were really important, whether it was you know seeing my grandmother for her birthday or or just even visiting people that we love that were hurting or sick or in the hospital and having to isolate from them. People around us were affected by it. A lot of people lost their jobs and a lot of people were uh, just taking it very hard because uh, they lost loved ones through the, through the virus. Just people were just sick. I would say that we were hit pretty hard by it because it was pretty bad on Pulaski. It was pretty bad um, on Roosevelt. Madison was pretty much shut down for even a month after. Um, and then, it, yeah, it just had an effect because I know there were certain people who couldn't get medicine, couldn't get, uh, there was one family that we knew who had a really hard time getting asthma medication for their daughter um, because the Walgreens were shut down. The goal was never stop. It just that things we can't control. We just have to be on top of our game with everything else. So when it's time to go back outside, we're ready. Time to, to just start from getting my thoughts together. Like, I'm always, I'm always just planning ahead. I'm always getting some. So I'm going to talk to my management, management about a plan of another business venture I wanted to get. So we already had business ventures already lined up in our heads what we're going to implement. But, you know, it was time to just get, get more creative. And then my my agent was letting me know about that things are going to open up. So she's going to apply to me for some, some more gigs acting wise so it was just more just like lining up dots and just trying to figure out what the next best move would be so i don't necessarily think that the virus will be any better i think it'll still be very serious and something that we have to deal with but i think we'll get better at our response and be able to handle it better the biggest impact corona has had on me so far i think is the fact that i have to work remote between both jobs i work a full-time job uh through cps and then i work here at a part-time job in the afternoon and i also attend graduate school at night so i'm pretty busy so it, i had to readjust my whole entire life where i'm used to going in every day to either work or go to class now everything is remote so i had to readjust myself around initially when this first started on march 16th was our last day of work here and we thought we would be back by the 31st and it didn't happen so I, I, I'm single, I live alone, and so I think I was suffering from some loner's anxiety or something. And some friends I have who are business owners, some friends who are first responders who actually work as uh, EMTs and nurses were uh, contracted the uh, coronavirus and actually gotten sick, and they had to take some time off, which caused them not to work um, and only compensate for only so much from being off. So sometimes people have problems with, with food and they needed some help. We would go pick up some food and eat. Or the school was giving our food. We had no transportation, so we would go to the school and drop off food. And then, like, the kids would come together, like, two and three on Monday, and come in and just start making pancakes. And then the pancakes would eat their food, all that stuff, so the kids take. So it wasn't going over there just for social cause. We could be still keeping a distance, and then going to go to work to their house. But we would at least be able to see them from a distance, maybe in the window, they would come to the porch and we would get to talk to them if they weren't on the Zoom calls. But when we were delivering kits to them, that's because they were on the Zoom calls. I've been in really, I've been in communication with pretty much all my students. Uh, that's the great thing about working here. You have a really strong relationship with your students. They, no matter where you go, they tend to follow. So I created a group chat online that we have, and then we meet up three to four times a week on a webinar that, we, that I host. Well, one of the podcasts that we made, they, they really missed each other. They missed the center. They missed us, even. And some of them was like, I'll be glad when this is over because I'll be able to hug people.